five. Hold on now, it's crazy. It gets, it gets this wild. Oh, wild. Oh, look at it. I got a pond. I got a new pond. Welcome to the channel. This is a continuation of the trade-up series where we take non-running things that we find off Facebook Marketplace and yard sales, start with this $2 chainsaw, and then we fix them and sell them, build off of those profits until we can buy something cool. We went to that L100 John Deere after that, and then to an LT2000 Craftsman, which was more of a learning curve, if I'm going to be honest with you, and broke even on that. And now we've got some new things to fix and sell. Aside from this one that I actually I don't want to keep around the house because we push them all around the house. We got a bunch of trees and landscaping and stuff, and I feel like that it's about the same width as our push mower, but it'd be a little handier. We've got this one that a subscriber actually dropped off to us. He said he bought a new one, something electrical, he thought, but it wasn't running. We'll try to get that one going too. See what we got. First, we'll just go through the basics real quick, like make sure nothing's. Living in here. Oh, there's a little friend, huh? I'm sure, that's fine. The fellow wanted to clean it out more, then he could start a trade-up series and uh, clean it out more. But I'm okay with it. Fuel tanks on. I think I've got some extra filters. We'll go ahead and swap some out. I guess I like. We'll go ahead and drain that too. Put some new fuel in there. What do we got? What's. Oh, we're not really attached. Just have to tighten up that bracket. I feel like there's supposed to be something there, maybe, but not too worried about it. Oil looks good. Go throw a jump pack on real quick. See if the starter and everything works like it's supposed to. Like I said, I traded a little bit of firewood and uh, some four-wheeler ramps that I hadn't used in years for this. Starter stuff works. I'm gonna drain that gas. Put some fresh gas in. Just dump it in this jug. The fuel shut off is turned off, so it should. Uh... Might get a little come out, but it shouldn't be. Crazy, that fuel line's pretty, pretty spongy too. The heck they got on there? Let me change that fuel line. I don't think that's rated for gas. This fuel line, or what they had on there for fuel line. Pretty sure that hose is breaking down from the inside out, which that's not gonna be good for a carburetor or anything running, really. Right through the tire, wouldn't that be something? No, you're not gonna be able to see it down in there, but the valve itself, can't see any daylight through there. The valve itself is clogged up. So that is open right now. Should be able to see through there. I oh, just got some cheap little mini brushes here and uh, about got it out what it is it's the rubber from inside that hose that's broken down and I'll spray some brake clean down this real quick too you can actually see through it now curiosity's got the better of me here We'll see what the inside of this line looks like. Good news is, big stuff like that's not, well, shouldn't make it past the fuel filter. So at least there's a fuel filter in the line. Here you go. There's the inside of it. Look at that. Gotta use the right kind of line, that is for sure. That's why, like on the 555 project, that intake hose for the hydraulic tank is so important. 
And uh, one thing I didn't mention on the past video, when I'm getting those new hydraulic hoses made, I'm going to have them cut me a section of hydraulic hose for that intake hose. But that's, that's why it matters. If you don't have the properly rated line, it'll break down. You can imagine that trying to get through your carburetor, and it's not going to. So I need to pick up fuel filter, fuel line. I'll go ahead and replace this section of line too. This looks right. That should be okay, but we'll go ahead and replace it as well. And a new plug, battery. But hopefully that's all this one takes. Let's get the next one. Well, this is actually a pretty daggone nice mower. All the plastic and everything's in good shape. Deck's in pretty daggone good shape, too. Not any gas in the fuel filter, which is odd, but we'll get to that in a second. Look at there. Reverse, forward. It's got some top-of-the-line features. Cup holder, everything a fella needs. We got some stuff going on in here, but nothing crazy. Let's, uh, let's get into it. Let's start with the basics. It's always the best way to do it. There's a, a section down below, it's called the comment section. Uh, if you would have pressure washed this off before, you could just leave that opinion there. Filter looks good. If it's got any of this in it. It does. That's good. A little fuel pump right here that pulls it. And, uh, let's see here. Fuel tank's under the seat. I'm just curious if there's a fuel shut off on this one or not. I don't see it shut off. Did not come with a key, but you can get generic keys offline. As long as it can turn, it should be okay. Jump pack on it. Battery's probably not going to... Just kind of going over making sure that uh, there's little safety switches all over these there's one right here and it looks like it's reaching that everything looks like it's in place just kind of making sure the basics like the seat safety and all these safeties are actually existing now let's throw a jump pack on and see what it does starter works engine spins We'll drain the gas, throw some new gas in it, crank it, and see if fuel actually pulls through that filter. It's a little suspicious there's no fuel in that fuel filter, so. So we're gonna take this old gas out, but because, I don't know if you can see it, this thing has a fuel pump. It means it has a tube that goes down, draws that fuel up, comes out the top. So I can't just drain out the bottom like on the other one. I am gonna disconnect and already have disconnected the fuel hose, because I do want to drain whatever bad fuel is in this hose. We gotta pull that out the bottom. So that's got her pulled empty. I'm gonna run it back over, hook up to the filter, throw some fresh gas, then we'll crank her, see if anything makes it into that filter. Let's give her a little choke action. To me, it doesn't look like it's pulling any gas there. There is a little crack. I, I doubt there's, there's a possibility there's an air leak right there because of that crack. I doubt that's it. I think it still pulls some. But we can slide her down a little bit and see if that fixes it. Come on. Oop. I'm pretty sure this is a two size filter. Let's find out. Yeah. I'd be surprised if that was it, but we'll cut that clean, slide it on there and So we're definitely in this area now, working our way up. And I just pulled a piece of broken rubber off right there. There is a little bit of a nipple right there. Something tells me that might have something to do with it. I'm gonna clean this area up a bit. And we'll start taking her apart and see what's going on there. Not 100% sure how this works, so. The only logical answer is just take it apart a little further. And then maybe we'll get on the old interwebs and see what she says. 
Okay, so I got my research done. Here's what I found out. The fuel pump does in fact run off of pressure coming out of the valve cover. Comes out of that hose there. That one piece off the top is broken, which means the pressure wasn't, well, it was just escaping. It wasn't going into the fuel pump. I couldn't find any of these new, but I did find a used one that had an intact hose on it for 10 bucks on eBay, so I got that ordered. I'm not saying there's not something wrong with the pump or something further down the line, but I suspect this is the issue. And I do have one idea to try to confirm that. We're just going to leave this off the brackets, shove that down in there where it's supposed to be, and see if that'll then pull fuel to that bowl for us. Kind of rigged up, but should be able to test our theory anyway. See that gas coming in there, fellers? That's a good sign. Well, we got one component problem solved. It is, in fact, pulling fuel now. So well, that's good. I'm gonna take this off and let it bleed out just to make sure there's not any air hydro locks somewhere in that line. I don't know how it would be, but we'll just double check that real quick. We're on this side of it, might as well get comfortable. We'll go ahead and start taking this carburetor apart, see if we can't get it cleaned up a little bit. I did pull the plugs. I'm going to pick up some new plugs just because it's a cheap, easy thing to do. We're just going to pop this cover off and give us a little bit more room to work with. After we get the right size socket. gonna be a critter somewhere, huh? That probably would have been great. We're definitely getting gas up here because it's pouring out the carburetor, so that's good. So I got her all cleaned up. There was uh, quite a bit of gas in here whenever I took it off and dumped it in the bowl. So the gas is getting all the way to the carburetors, which is good. I'm going to go ahead and take this bowl off. Looks like it's got a little solenoid there that does something. I just want to take that bowl off and make sure everything is inside there. There's nothing varnished up and frozen in place. And everything in there can move freely and do what it's supposed to do. I've got this real nice tool storage bench. Maybe one day I'll put a workbench in. That'd be cool. Pretty clean in there. Needle looks okay. I just want to pull these off and clean them. All right, I need to get to the top side of this thing. So I reckon we'll take this side off too. I'm going to take these four out next. That way we got all four sides exposed and we can start getting things cleaned up in there. So it's the next day, I got some more parts rounded up yesterday evening when I made a trip to town, including some more carburetor cleaner I didn't have any. I just went through, brushed everything out really well, and now we're going to take some carb cleaner, spray through everything. Honestly, everything looks pretty decent in here. Let's 
Carburetor's all cleaned up. Looks pretty good. Really didn't look too bad on the inside, but never hurts to go through and brush everything out and clean it. Let's get it back on there, throw the new spark plugs in. We'll see if we have spark on the plugs and see if we can't get fire up. So I'm going to plug this solenoid in before we hook everything up. Just give it power through the tractor and see if we can't, or hear if we can't uh, identify it working or not working. Sounds like it's working. So that's good. We'll go ahead and throw, uh, I picked up some new filters. We'll go ahead and throw a new one on here too. So you can see there's a little gunk down in that contact. I think it's still probably making plenty of contact and that's not an issue, but we'll go ahead and clean it out since we got it apart. Just go take a screwdriver, and a little flathead, kind of scrape everything loose. Good and shiny in there. I'll do the other side, we'll throw the plugs in. I'm gonna leave that unhooked for now. Throw those plugs in, we'll crank it, see if we can see some sparks on the old spark plugs. But it is sparking on both of them, so let's get them both installed. All right, we're working through the system. So we're pulling fuel great now, look at that. That bowl's all the way filled, and that is the new clean fuel. So all the old fuel is out of the system. We got that going. We know our spark plugs are working. We know our fuel pump's working. We know the carburetor's clean. Is even though we hear that solenoid clicking, maybe it's not actually doing what it's supposed to. So I'm gonna take this back off, take that bowl off, we know the fuel's making it to the bowl. It is a nasty rainy day. Of course, Subaru's getting rained on, but we're in the dry. I even flipped around so you guys could have some decent lighting in this weather, the things I do for you. So to eliminate the solenoid as a potential issue, I just did the old solenoid delete kit. I just ran a bolt through that hole with a gasket, put it all back together, fired it up, same result. Uh, I don't think the solenoid is the issue. Like I said, it, it sounded like it was working. So I don't think that was the problem. I just kind of wanted to, you know, let's just be 100% sure on it. This is the way that solenoid works, by the way. And you can see it's free, it's moving. You know, we can hear it clicking, so we're pretty sure it's working. But it fits up in there. And it basically plugs that hole off. So if it doesn't have power... It's normally in this position, which means it's got that hole plugged up, which means fuel can't get to it. The theory is that keeps fuel from staying in the carburetor and kind of flooding the system out between uses. This is why I love keeping old sockets around from like yard sales and stuff. So I had to cut that one. It fits on there, but because it has that, uh, that adjustment right there, that little screw, you couldn't get a traditional socket on there. So I just notched that out. We were able to spin it right out of there. So we know the carburetor is good. We've cleaned it multiple times. We know the solenoids function. We know we have spark on both of those, even with that wire that's chewed up. And we know we got plenty of fuel because it's getting to the bowl. One last thing I want to check. We're going to check for compression. I bought this whenever we did the last mowers. And I never even opened it or used it. So we'll check compression on both cylinders next. The hair in the rain is just not happening today. There's definitely gas getting to the cylinder. You can smell it in there. So. We'll see if we can get this to do anything. Maybe I can. Am I good enough to hold this while I turn the key? All right, see if I can hold this while I turn the key over here. Oh, we got compression on this side. No doubt about that. Well, let's check the other side. Apparently, I yeeted the spark plug socket as far as I could. If this other side has compression, the only other thing I could think of is it's out of time. And it's got a keyed flywheel. So what we might do, if the other side has compression, is pop that, uh, pop that off and make sure that the key on the flywheel didn't shear off to make sure it's still in time. That's about the only other thing I could think of. Same procedure on this side. We're just going to take this plug out, take our little adapter. Like I said, it's got that O-ring. You don't have to get crazy with it. 
I just run in by hand. I don't even. I'll go put the ratchet on. Whoops. Helps if you get it in the in the hole there, bud. There we go. Try this side. Oh yeah. We're taking this off next. And my eBay replacement came in. This looks good. Ten bucks. Go ahead and throw this on and try that real quick too. I tried to find just this part. Somebody probably knows how to find it. I didn't have any luck tracking it down. Oh, Ten bucks isn't bad. All right. That as good as new there. Get these screws in. nut off the Subaru. Oh, they must have been made in the same spot. So you can see the key right there. And it looks like to me that it's still in the right spot. I'm trying to see there. There is a notch. Yeah, it's sitting on both. Doesn't look like it's sheared off, and I don't see another spot around here where it, you know, looks like it should be. So that should be right. Spark. Whoops. Compression. Fuel. Timing. I don't think it's a safety switch. If it is a safety switch, I don't think the starter would turn. I don't think it's anything else electrical, because if it was anything else electrical, we wouldn't have spark. And again, the, I don't think the starter would turn. It's got to be something mechanical. Valve's out of adjustment, perhaps? We haven't been in that valve cover yet. Let's take a gander in there. So I gotta take the spark plug back out so we can get top dead center on that piston. I had to look it up online. We're 0.04 uh, for the exhaust. I'm sorry, 0.04 for the intake and intakes on top side. That should be intake valve. 0.06 on the exhaust. Exhaust comes out the bottom, so that should in theory be the exhaust valve. This is a T40, and this is supposed to be a 13 millimeter nut. So you know, 5 to 15, it's in that range. That'll make people happy. By the way, we're getting ready to get nailed. We just got a severe thunderstorm warning. Those are some interesting looking clouds in the distance, so this is going to get exciting. But All right, my feeler gauges don't go small enough for that. I need 0 .004 and 0 .006. So I got to pick up a different set of feeler gauges. So I'm going to pick up some more feeler gauges so I can get the right valve lash setting on that mower. And you leave in the comments. You think that's what it is? You think we're down to valve settings? Spark, good. Fuel, good. The key and the flywheel, good. Pump's working. Gas is good. Filter's good. Carburetor's been cleaned out. Solenoid's working. I'm uh, running out of things to check. Compression's good, right? You tell me. You think it's the valve settings? We'll figure it out in an upcoming video. This one, we got the new fuel filter on and the new fuel line put on and the gas tank secured again. So let's put some new gas in, set a battery down in there and see if this one will kick off for us. It's fine. Everything's fine. Where's the... It's 
not pulling fuel through the filter. Let's just uh, let's just take this off. Just let some fuel run through. And we got the filter bowl full. Let's see what she does. Strong spark. Plenty of compression. So I ended up taking the carburetor off and cleaning it. It was really filthy inside that carburetor. Whole bunch of varnish, whole bunch of uh, stuff clogged up. We got her all cleaned up, some carburetor cleaner. And you can tell I already took her button. Let's take her for a spin button. Listen, you're gonna, I don't care what you think. I'm keeping this one. I like this one, neutral. Took a hit too. Hopefully, it didn't crack that fitting on there. I was gonna go work on the bridge the rest of the day, but I don't think I need to be out in the woods today. Seems like a good day to be in the house doing some paperwork. Honestly, I'm gonna keep that GX75. We push more everything around the house because of all the little landscaping stuff. We don't really have a yard, just a bunch of landscaping and kids' toys and that kind of stuff. So, we're gonna keep that. That's gonna be handy. And then that L120, I could use a little help. It's gotta be the valve setting, the valve lashing. So I gotta get the right size feeler gauges and we'll try to work on that on the next episode. Sell it, buy the next trade-up series. By the way, there's a chainsaw and a sailboat coming up in a trade-up series video really soon. So you might like that. More bridge content, more of my brother's content. That's it, that's all I got on this one. I appreciate you guys watching. I'll catch you on the next one.